Welcome back to McMaster University course, Computer Science 1JC3, Introduction to Computational Thinking. I am Bill Farmer, and we're going to continue with the topic of software development. So I have a question for you. What can testing show about a software product? You have five choices, that the product is correct, that the product is reliable, that the product is robust, B and C, or all of the above. So I'll give you a moment to try to answer that. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this. Um, testing does not show that a product is correct usually. This is because a product to be correct, we have to show it works on all inputs in all environments. And this is usually an impossibility. Uh, so this is not the case. But testing can show that a product is reliable and it can show that it's robust. Robust means that the product can deal with unexpected situations. Reliable means it works correctly it, it usually works correctly when it's used as, as it was designed for. So this is the right answer. Now software testing is the most important technique for analyzing the quality of a software product. But what can be done with testing is limited. As I've said, it's usually impossible to test every possible input in environmental configuration. So testing can show instances of incorrectness. We can run a test and we can see if the software works correctly. If it doesn't, we, we have an instance of incorrectness. Um, but it's not practical for demonstrating correctness. So you could do all kinds of testing and it may be that the, the cases where the software doesn't work correctly, you have never, you've just missed. So positive results are not by themselves an indication of software quality. Um, so, and more than that, the theory of testing leads to many undecidable problems, problems that we cannot, we cannot solve using computers. But testing is used to assess reliability and robustness. So there's many kinds of test selection. We're going to focus on three of the most well-known. One is black box testing. So black box testing is we, we test our software product by looking at its requirement specification, but not by looking at the actual code. So this is why it's black box. We can't see what's what the code is, but we can see what the code is supposed to do. So we test selections based on the requirements. White box testing is testing where we can actually look at the code. We can look at the code and we think if this looks suspicious, we can develop test cases to try to see if our suspicions are warranted. Um, now, statistical random testing this is used for testing reliability. The way it works is we develop an operational profile of how the product will be used normally. And then we randomly develop test cases. And then we measure how successful the product is with these randomly developed test cases. So we can come up with a conclusion if the product is used the way we expect it normally will be used it's 95% reliable, which means 5% of the time when it's used, there may be problems. So that's statistical random. While random is used for testing for robustness. Here, we just generate in a uniform way all kinds of random test cases. Now, most of these random test cases probably will never come up because they're, they're well outside of the normal use of the system. But they might help us find problems with the software that we would never be able to find otherwise. 
Now, I'm going to mention some general testing recommendations. One is what's called unit testing. We start by testing the smallest components first. We make sure they work correctly. Then we put them together to make to get bigger units. Then we test those and we keep working our way up till we finally test the whole product. Another recommendation is to test all possible paths through a program and all statements in the program. This is called path coverage and statement coverage. So basically we're testing the entire code. We're not leaving something out. Um, it's also important to test all types of data combinations. And this is particularly true for cases along the boundaries. Um, so these can be right at the boundary, or they can be far from the boundary on either side, or they can be very close to the boundary on either side. We want to test all those kind of cases. We want to test extreme cases. These are cases where, for instance, numbers are very small or very large. We want to test degenerate cases. These are cases that uh, could actually come up, but they're, they're not expected to come up, like the case for an empty file. Using an empty file, in most cases, is of no benefit, but will the system work with an empty file, for instance? And then last of all, are erroneous cases, cases that where something is wrong. An example would be the name. We're testing with where the name is a name for a non-existing file. Okay, so I'm gonna end our series of lectures by reminding you what computational thinking is. I have a whole number of things I've mentioned to you before, so I'm gonna take a moment and read them off. Computational thinking is using the right computational tools in the right way for the problem at hand. That's number one. Number two, computational thinking is understanding the limits and pitfalls of computational tools. Number three, computational thinking is solving problems by recursion. Number four, computational thinking is proving properties by induction. Number five, computational thinking is defining data using algebraic data types. Number six, Computational thinking is defining functions over algebraic data types using recursion and pattern matching. Number seven, computational thinking is using virtual systems. Number eight, computational thinking is employing models with several layers of abstraction. Number nine, computational thinking is identifying threats to information security and devising the means to protect against them. Ten. Computational thinking is using encrypt encryption of various kinds to protect information security. Number 11, computational thinking is using little languages to solve families of problems. And 12, computational thinking is using a rational development process to produce quality software. Now, computational thinking involves even more than these 12, 12 definitions. Um, but I will leave that up to you to find out. So this ends the lectures for the course Computer Science 1JC3 Introduction to Computational Thinking. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>